Good morning, everybody. It is time for another weekly preview video. So this time around on the PC mobile side of things, what we've got going on in the chests are some Darkstone troops. And if you don't know, Darkstone's a pretty cool kingdom. And there's a very specific reason for this. And that is because... We've got our boy, the Possessed King, in the event chest so absolutely 100 percent recommend you open up some event keys and there's a couple reasons for this now first reason is that tpk is in there absolute must have troop so please open up event chests and pray your heart out that you get this guy event chests are a great way to try and get possessed king unfortunately just due to the uh, odds of pulling a mythic from event chests you're probably gonna have to open anywhere in the realm of like 500 to a thousand to have a pretty good chance at getting him but please do roll them dice. He is the best. Uh, also, we've got Gruz the Undefeated, who's brand new this week. So he's only available in event chests this time around. So if you are trying to pull him, uh, that's the only place you can. Admittedly, he's nothing really all that crazy, though. So dealing damage to one specific enemy, and then cursing them, and then inflicting two to four stacks of bleed. All of this is kind of whatever. It's nothing all that interesting. This victory lap thing is kind of interesting, where he gains mana when an enemy dies. But in reality, there's really nothing all that interesting about him. Uh, I don't see myself pretty much ever using this troop. He looks kind of cool, but that's about it. But if you are just a collector, um, he's the only way that you can get them right now is through the event chests. Um, Magnus and Sihan are also interesting. Um, I think both of these troops are fun to have, but not necessarily used all that much. So if you get these, that's kind of fun, but for the most part, you're opening up a vent chest for these two guys this time around. So enjoy, open, pray, uh, whatever it is you'd like to do. For the PC, mobile, Xbox, PS4 side, we've got Guild Wars this time around. So absolutely today, make sure you're jumping through, setting all of your defenses, and then make sure that you're going into your Sentinels and upgrading these as much as you can. As a reminder, Sentinels uh, will upgrade for yourself, but then also give them to everyone above you. So uh, as you can see down here, also gives some bonuses to guildmates of a higher rank. So if you are a lower rank and you're trying to help your guild out, uh, absolutely jump jump in and do your sentinels. Uh, they also help yourself, of course, that's a good amount of stats to have. So not getting your sentinels is only hurting yourself. Make sure you jump in and get them if you can. As far as the uh, glory troop that we've got this time around, it's uh, Mr. Corrupt Troll over here. So being a troll, he's doing a very similar kind of thing. He's creating a mix of green and purple equal to the current number of green and purple. So green and purple is kind of an interesting mix of things. Um, it doesn't take that much, of course. In terms of traits, he doesn't really have all that interesting stuff in here. Um, but, you know, another troll type. Trolls are always very useful as far as mana generation is concerned. So I'd strongly recommend you go in there and get that. Um, he's available in the glory reward section and of course you're getting two arcane blood trait stones every time you get one So you only need 16 to get them all the way through so make sure you jump in there and get that uh, For the arcane blood stones if nothing else as far as the soul forge this time around which is not that button It's this one uh, we've got Some stuff so web spinners in there and generally I don't recommend getting legendaries with uh, your resources here in the Soul Forge. However, uh, Web Spinner is very cool. So if you're not familiar, um, he's doing damage to all and creating some greens. Um, but the more notable thing about him is that he's inflicting web when he does skull damage, but then does triple skull damage to people that are poisoned or webbed. So Web Spinner is someone super high value. If you run them in your top slot, pretty much every single time you hit somebody, they're either going to be super hurt or super dead. So pretty cool craft. Um, again, I wouldn't necessarily recommend crafting legendaries, but if you are jonesing for something new, uh, he's pretty high value. Also of note is he has means chosen, does a decent amount of damage boosted by entangled enemies, and the boost ratio is pretty solid. Uh, scattered damage, of course, it's hitting everybody, so this isn't going to feel all that crazy when they have a full troop set there. However, when they're down to like three troops, two troops, this starts to feel a lot more powerful. Uh, however, she is also creating 10 green gems, which is a very strong amount of mana generation. So someone that has loot potential like this and does damage like this is pretty great. The other bonus that's coming with her is that she's gaining magic whenever someone casts a spell, which is cool. And then she's also entangling a random enemy whenever you match green gems. So with Yasmin's Chosen, somebody that you definitely want to be doing lots of green mana generation, lots of looping, uh, you'll entangle everybody, those entangles will boost your damage, uh, she creates more green herself. 
Overall, a very solid troop. Uh, I have her rated, I think, in the high B tier, if not the low A tier. Um, someone that's very, very effective. Entangle is a very strong ability to, to have on somebody. The other person is Voice of Orpheus. So Voice of Orpheus is doing damage based on all the ally mana that you have. So if everybody on your team is full, for instance, you can generally expect Voice of Orpheus to nuke for anywhere like to 80 to 97 damage, somewhere in there. Uh, he does a really strong single target nuke. It's also cleansing everybody when you cast it, so that's kind of fun. And it's also giving mana to everybody, which is also kind of fun. But most of note is that he's impervious, so he's immune to all status effects. But he's also cleansing all allies when matching yellow gems. So basically, when Voice of Orpheus is on your team, you never need to worry about debuffs. All you have to do is find a single three match of yellow gems and you're cleansed up. And he has a really strong single target nuke, assuming everybody on your team is full mana. So overall, Voice of Orpheus I rate very, very highly. I think in my latest tier video, I moved him down to a high B tier, but overall, I think he's a really, really strong troop. Um, as his name would imply, he also pairs up very nicely with the Orpheus verse weapon that was released a few weeks ago. So overall, I'd say if you were looking to craft anything this time around, uh, Web Spinner is a maybe, Yasmin's Chosen is a maybe, Voice of Orpheus is a maybe. None of these are must crafts, but they are pretty cool. In the weapons side of things, um, we've got Blood Drinker. So Blood Drinker, if you're not familiar, is kind of like a weird mang kind of thing. So it's stealing half of the attack. So the benefit of using a Blood Drinker over a mang, for instance, would be not only are you um, stealing attack and making your attack stronger, but since you've stolen attack, you make yourself a little bit easier um, when you're fighting the other team since they have half the attack that they had before. This isn't destroying armor or anything like that, so you're still gonna have to punch through like the full armor kit of that troop up top, for instance. So overall, I wouldn't really say Blood Drinker is preferable over Mang. The main reason you'd potentially want this is if there's some uh, situation where the enemy attack is way higher than their armor would be, for instance, which is not really likely, at least not in events. In events, the armor and uh, health and attack are all pretty like on par with each other as far as scaling goes. So there's never a situation really where somebody's armor is just totally gone and they have like a trillion attack. Um, if you were trying to run like Megavore, for instance, like that is just destroying all enemy armor, then Blood Drinker would maybe be a better partner for that. But overall, uh, I wouldn't recommend crafting this per se. Uh, it is nice. But, you know, spending resources on something that's kind of a worse version of something everybody gets for free with Mang, uh, not too high to recommend. If you don't have it and you are a collector, of course, feel free. But um, overall, having Mang is more than likely going to be better than a Blood Drinker in all instances. Uh, I've never used Blood Drinker, for instance, if that gives you any indication that uh, it might not be that great. Uh, Doomed Runestones are in here. Uh, these are just the life-giving kinds of... Uh, you know, Doom weapons would not really recommend crafting these. Um, if they do eventually get buffed at some point in the future, they'd be worth it. But as they stand right now, not really worth it. And that's a lot of resources. So uh, not worth crafting just, you know, on the off chance that you might end up getting them buffed at some point. Um, but then looking forward in the week, we've got some other kind of cool stuff going on. So if we just look at like the traditional, um, you know, event spoilers... So if we scroll down here, we can see there's Battle Crasher Monday to Wednesday. So Kusith is going to be floating around in all of your fights, uh, at least for the next couple days. Uh, but then we have a Faction Assault for All-Seeing Eye. So All-Seeing Eye, of course, is extremely important as far as the Faction Assault is concerned. Um, the troops that are in there are all pretty cool. But the main thing of note when it comes to that is the fact that the Jar of Eyes weapon will be available to purchase in the Faction Assault store. This is like a weapon that I've rated as like one of the highest in the game. Just because it's exploding the entire board, it has a summon potential in there, which is kind of fun. Um, it constantly creates an ice storm when you get it all the way leveled up. But then it also steals a couple mana from the first enemy, so you can kind of be that annoying person that's just always, uh, you know, preventing them from getting a cast off. So Jar of Eyes, extremely high value weapon, so if nothing else during the Faction Assault, make sure you're grabbing that. Um, we're also going to be having a Plague Lord class event on... Uh, Thursday. So if you're looking to level up your Plague Lord class, that would be a great opportunity to do that. Um, but then, the other thing that's kind of fun is that we're getting a new Delve. So the Delve map is going to look like this. It's going to be the uh, City of Thieves. So as far as like a Delve map goes, this one looks like it's going to be kind of nice because you're really only going to have to do two fights before you go to the boss. 
some of these delve layouts they force you to go through like three to four or five fights uh, this one it's going to be you know i'm assuming you'll start here it'll go like one two three um so going to be pretty farmable from that respect if we look at what the actual uh, troops that are going to be in there actually are so we've got somebody like uh, let me make this a little more visible for you no, no. Um, we've got Cat Burglar here, which is like some of the coolest art, I'd say. That's like really nice. Um, so what they're doing here is dealing damage to the last two enemies, and then if one of those enemies dies, you gain 20 gold in an extra turn. Um, as far as their traits go, it's really, you know, pretty standard. They are getting Extreme Greed, which is four bonus gold whenever you're matching four or more gems. So that's a lot, well, I shouldn't say a lot higher. It's two higher than normal. Um, and they're also stealthy. So the, this troop is kind of, you know, nothing I'd see really using, but as you can tell, since this is a City of Thieves style delve, like gold mechanics are going to be largely in play here. Um, nothing all that crazy. I mean, getting an extra 20 gold when somebody dies is really not that interesting. The extra turn is a lot more interesting there. So this troop, kind of cool. Um, the legendary this time is the King of Thieves. It's the king himself. I mean, you're dealing damage to an enemy, but then you're gaining... Uh, stuff to all skills boosted by your gold and this is a five to one boost ratio so you can picture if you have a hundred um a hundred gold you know by the time you go to cast this guy he's actually going to be gaining what 20 to all skills well 23 to all skills at that point um so the damage he's doing outright is really not all that strong however if you can cast him a few times when you've gotten your gold maxed out or very high um he will gain a lot of stats so this is kind of an interesting troop because that nuke will be doing more damage every time you do it as well. So this guy actually does have some use outside of the actual delve itself. I can see this being something uh, that actually does get some play with all the new gold mechanics that we've got with the new weapons that are out there. Um, pretty, pretty interesting. So um, I would say if you're opening up the, um, you know, chaos shards for this uh, delve make sure you try and grab the king of thieves he actually looks like he is going to have some value since he does scale so uh, highly like this so that's pretty cool uh, another person is street thief so they're just stealing all of the enemy gold so this is also kind of crazy because um, the previous weapon that came out with the corsair class was doing damage based on all enemy and ally gold um, this is just stealing all the enemy gold this isn't going to allow you to go over your max or anything like that but in a world where gold teams become a much more like common thing, a troop like this might become very interesting at that point in time because you can just completely ruin their damage potential by stealing all of their gold. So that's kind of interesting. But then what's also kind of interesting is that they're creating mana gems boosted by the gold stolen. So the gold stolen piece is kind of important. This isn't based on your gold, it's based on how much they stole. So the potential on this is pretty low. Again, you're not usually fighting lineups that are doing a lot of gold mechanics. Um, in the delve itself, however, this could be more interesting. So when you're trying to do an all-faction team, for instance, having someone like Street Thief on your team may prevent the other faction team from doing some of their interesting stuff by having them there. Um, and the ability to create a bunch of purple is kind of fun. But again, generally not going to get used all that much uh, outside of the delve, I should say. Um, but then, as far as their traits go, there's really nothing all that interesting. Uh, they're all getting this extreme greed thing, so that's kind of of note. Street Thief, pretty darn interesting. And then we have Tomb Raider, nope, Tomb Robber, haha. <laughs> uh, and we get this person, who I swear is just like a set of ears away from like a Mithra in Final Fantasy XI or something like that. But uh, we've got this Tomb Robber. So they're creating skulls boosted by gold, so this is your gold in this instance, up to a max of 14. So again, if you're doing a very um, gold-based lineup, which this delve will absolutely be doing, um, this can create a bunch of skulls. So having King of Thieves, for instance, in your first slot, and then having someone like this on your team, uh, whenever King of Thieves is boosting his stats, then you have somebody that's creating skulls to make them use all of those fun stats against the enemy team on top of the magic damage. So this is kind of fun. Uh, they also get the extreme greed, and they're also agile. So overall, the troops that are available in the new delve look kind of interesting. Um, it's going to really ramp up the amount of gold, you know, nonsense you can be doing uh, with your team making. So uh, the delve layout's pretty fun, and uh, the troops are actually pretty interesting. So I would strongly recommend you jump in there and get all of these troops if you can. Uh, King of Thieves is someone that we're all definitely going to be playing around with a lot. So that's all the cool, fun stuff going on on the PC, mobile, Xbox, PS4 side.
On the Switch side, in the event keys this time around, what you guys have is Kazil. Kazil, which is the dwarf kingdom that's floating out there. So if you look at who you could be getting in there, um, probably the only ones of note would be Stonehammer in Gorgotha and High King Ironforge over here, or <laughs> High King Ironforge, High King Highforge, holy crap. Uh, so Stonehammer, he's kind of cool. I wouldn't really use keys to try and chase him, but he does do a very nice mana generation effect. Um, the downside of him is that using him is pretty complicated since he doesn't do anything offensive really. He stuns everyone and then burns everyone, but then it's really just casting mana and getting a little tankier. Um, he does have one of the strongest skull reductions in the game, so that's pretty cool. He's also immune to pretty much everything, so that's kind of fun. Um, but he can still get entangled, he can still get like instantly destroyed with um, you know lethal damage, that kind of fun stuff. So overall, not the greatest troop, admittedly. I wouldn't spend a bunch of keys to get him. Um, Gorgotha is a lot more interesting and a lot more used, I would say. So he's exploding more or less the entire board and then cleansing himself. So he's somebody that if you run him in the top line of your troops, um, he's got 75% skull reduction, which is really, really nice. Uh, nothing really else of note up there. But as far as mana generation goes, uh, you're able to get him really going. So that is super duper nice. So if you're opening up event keys, um, Gorgoth is probably the most notable. Um, King High Forge is pretty also nice. So he's stunning the last two enemies and doing damage to them, which is, you know, this part's pretty okay. You're stunning two people. It's boosted by allied dwarves, so this would imply you want to be running an all dwarf team. Uh, and this is probably why, which means all dwarves are starting battle with 50% mana. So the Rune Priest class exists, which is a dwarf type. So that would also give your Rune Priest 50% mana start if you run it with King High Forge over here. Um, and he's also just summoning more dwarves. So generally, I would say if you're running a dwarf specific lineup, having King High Forge is pretty uh, standard, pretty required, if you will. Uh, the boost ratio on this is okay. So. Uh, overall, I would say uh, that's what you're chasing with your event keys. It's Gorgotha and King High Forge. Um, those are going to be your boys. So that's what's going on in the event keys. As far as the event, uh, you guys have an invasion this time around, which means you guys are going to be smacking you some towers. I did make a team for this. So if we look at the team I threw together, uh, this is the new troop that's available. This is Zach Boom Grizzle. Uh, they're doing damage to the tower with the normal boosting based on their ascensions. Uh, the cool thing about him, though, is that he's exploding three red gems when you cast him. So this is actually kind of nice because this is a loop potential troop that's actually also a tower destroyer. So as far as his traits go, really nothing that cool. It's just the normal fortitude that pretty much every dwarf gets. Um, however, having him is kind of nice. And he does have the siege breaker ability to, uh, you know, blow stuff up. So this is a team that you can be using. This is like a, you know, using all just basic troops kind of thing. Uh, Gimlet is also the other new troop, so I'll show that real quick. Um, you find him in the glory rewards section, so you make sure you get Gimlet and you get him all the way up. Uh, this troop is absolutely 100% like amazing. I would recommend you get him to mythic with your glory if at all possible. Uh, not that it's required that he has to be mythic, but I promise you, you'll be using Gimlet forever going forward. He's probably one of my favorite empowered converters. Um, so he is empowered, which means he starts with full mana. He's also transforming all green to brown. So creating brown mana specifically is obviously very strong for a few reasons, but uh, most notably is that there's a bunch of classes that will get barriers on browns, for instance. Um, and a lot of the tankier kind of like top line troops, they're all going to generally be using brown. So someone that can instantly make a bunch of brown mana is pretty great. But then beyond that, he's enraging that top person, which means they're going to be doing 1.5 times the normal amount of skull damage they would do and it enrages them. So what enraging does is that uh, it's going to punch through traits, as it says here. So for instance, uh, if somebody had 100% skull reduction, for instance, which isn't really a thing, but if they did, um, and your top troop was enraged, you would still hit them as if they were any other regular troop for that first attack. Um, so this effect ends after the first attack. So having someone that's enraging people um, and having people that are generally um, tanky top line troops up here and giving them life and enrage and giving them brown mana, um, there's a lot of really nice synergy that goes on with this. So Gimlet Stormbrew, 100% required, um, please get them in the glory reward section. But this team overall is really nice for this event um, because we've got Apothecary who's cleansing and creating a bunch of brown. We've got Gimlet who's creating a bunch more brown. We've got a troop that can actually loop, and then we've got Mang to just help us keep our barrier up um, since we're running a Rune Priest here. 
and then stealing a bunch of armor, turning into attack. So we've got two really strong damage dealers here. Um, this event can also be run with multiple instances of Zach Boom Grizzle. Since he's a looping style kind of troop, um, it's actually really nice. So having multiple instances of him is totally viable. You could potentially run him in the top slot, for instance, and then use some other weapon like a Mountain Crusher underneath him, uh, or just run Mountain Crusher up top with multiple Zack Boom Grizzles. Um, I would never recommend putting Crusher underneath him, for instance, but uh, multiple Zack Boom Grizzles is definitely a thing that you could be putting above him. Um, so overall, really, really nice. Should be a very easy uh, event. I remember when this event took place for us, it was very nice and easy. Um, so multiple Boom Grizzles if you want to do that, um, or just run this style thing. You'll have all the brown mana you could possibly want. Something else that's kind of fun about the Rune Priest class. Um, so one of these is summoning a Dust Storm when an enemy dies. So you don't really have to worry too much about uh, you know running out of Dust Storms with this. Um, so if your Rune Priest isn't quite the level uh, that you'd want it to be, you can also totally run this with Titan. Um, there's really no reason why you would want to run this you know, with any other class besides these two. However, they're both like totally viable. So if your Rune Priest isn't quite up to level 40 like mine isn't, for instance, uh, running this with Titan would be totally fine as well. As far as what uh, weapons are in the, the uh, actual shop that's out there, so if we check the weapons and we sort by stone, uh, you'll see that Stone Aegis is out there. So this is giving all allies armor and then also potentially giving them uh, 8 attack and 2 mana for every enemy barrier. So since this is the event weapon, you can kind of see the synergy that this thing is going for. Typically when towers cast, they give themselves barrier, or they always do, I should say. So it's, you know, this weapon is kind of implying that you suck <laughs> at the invasion event because in order for this thing to be very useful, the entire other team would have to be barriered, for instance. So uh, this isn't really the greatest weapon on the planet. Um, it does give armor to all allies, so that's kind of fun. But, you know, the secondary effect is kind of only based on enemy barriers. I do not like wit, uh, weapons or conditions or anything like that. That kind of depends on you being in a bad spot to be effective. Um, to me, this implies you're in a bad spot because to get the most value out of this, you'd have to be getting hit by tons of towers first. Um, and at that point, the effect wouldn't really be that crazy. Since we're using the team that I showed before, Mang is going to give you all the attack on the world that you would ever want. Um, so generally not that great of a weapon. I still recommend in the event shop you get it, however, you never know. Um, but I wouldn't really recommend using it this time around for the event. Um, nothing all that crazy or interesting from that point of view. Um, so that kind of covers everything event-wise that's going on. So Zach Boom Grizzle, great event troop. Gimlet Stormbrew, absolutely required troop to get in general, but also useful for the event. As far as what's available in the Soul Forge this time around, um, there's a couple interesting options. So Ketris the Bull is in there. Um, so if you're not aware, he's somebody that's just going to do like one of the hardest nukes that's in the game because this is boosted by his attack, his life, and his armor uh, by a two to one. So what that means is, is you know, just looking at my base stats, for instance, um, I'm going to be getting an extra like 20 out of this, an extra like 25 out of this, and an extra 30 out of this. So what, all of that adds up to at least like 70 something. Um, and that's just how he starts. Um, so for me, just casting him if I immediately get mana is gonna be doing like 90 splash damage, which means it's hitting the troop I targeted and then half damage to the troop above and below them. So that's just like a crap ton of damage, right? And on top of all that, he's gaining stats two to attack armor and life when matching red gems. So all you need to do with Ketris in your team is get lots of red mana, and nuki nuki the crap out of all the people on the other team. Um, so Ketris, really strong troop, high nuke damage, uh, doesn't have any loot potential, so to me that always hurts his placement. However, in terms of just raw damage output, he's really great. So if you're looking to spend some resources in the Soul Forge, Ketris is obviously a really nice dude to have. Uh, the other person that's in there is uh, a little... I don't know, I don't like him that much, but he's kind of someone you always need to talk about, which is Elamogram. So Elamogram on paper, I think, is really great. So he's dealing a decent amount of damage to everybody, and he's creating purple gems, which he himself takes, so that's useful. Boosted by burning enemies, this is the part that gets a little weird. So boosted by burning enemies is something that's a little awkward because there's not really a lot of great ways to burn people without forcing you into like very specific lineups, for instance. And even if you do try and build around this burning thing, it's really only going to give you an extra up to four. 
So it would seem to imply you want to put Infernus with him all the time. Infernus takes purple, Elamogram takes purple. Um, but, I mean, I find that looping with Elamogram is a lot harder to do than it is with other troops. So he does have loop potential, but it's not the strongest loop potential on the planet. And trying to force his like extra mana generation here gets a little awkward. Um, but damage to all is obviously pretty cool with mana generations, obviously pretty cool. Most of note though, is that he's decreasing all enemy attack by four whenever you match four or more gems. So what this is meaning is that you can potentially just get the other team down to zero attack pretty darn quick, or at least be like hitting like weak little kittens kind of thing. So Elamogram overall is a pretty cool troop. Um, I would say that when you get him initially, he's probably a lot more cool and interesting, but you'll find in the late, late game, for instance, he's not really used all that much, um, but absolutely pretty cool. As far as the weapons went, I didn't see pretty much anything uh, that you guys would want to be crafting, so feel free to not craft any of the weapons that are in there. Um, but that covers everything that's going on on the Switch side around. So that is everything that's going on this week. Uh, so as far as me this week, yeah, I'm planning on making a couple of videos at least and trying to get a couple streams in. Uh, I am still waiting for redeem codes from our uh, best friends over at Infinity Plus 2. Um, so I could stream now, but I don't want to uh, have streams without codes because I know how much you guys love them. Um, but, you know, feel free to leave a comment that you'd watch my stream anyway, even if there weren't redeem codes potentially. Um, I do plan on having them pretty much always, but, you know, in this instance, at least right now, they don't seem to be there. So uh, that should be replenished relatively shortly. Hopefully I'll have them for tomorrow. Uh, my stream schedule is looking like it's going to be Tuesdays and Sundays um, at a minimum. So like Tuesday late at night, probably like... 7 p.m. Eastern time, and then Sunday mornings, which would probably be like around 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. Uh, that seems to be the most consistent stream schedule I have, and then I might sneak another one in on Thursdays. But yeah, uh, look forward to some new videos, look forward to the streams. Let me know in the comments if you'd care if I stream this week if I don't happen to have codes. Um, but that is all. So this is Keylime signing off, and make sure you like, subscribe, and all that other kind of fun stuff. Okay, bye.